Hi, I'm Tim Bradley, I want to Capital Blue. And what today the House Speaker do is Kodiak, who represents one of the nation's major fisheries ports and um, is very heavily engaged in seafood, which is something all of us are interested in who love fish. Uh, also served by the ferry system, very important, which has seen its issues in the past year or two. Anyway, thanks for joining us, uh, Madam Speaker. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for the invite to join you. Always happy to do so. So how's things in Kodiak? Oh, fabulous. You know, um, as you mentioned at the um, outset, Kodiak is one of the largest seafood producers where, uh, where we are the second largest in the state on deliveries. We're all the second largest to uh, Dutch Harbor. And I always say the only reason that is, is because our Kodiak fisher people deliver to Dutch Harbor. Otherwise we'd be number one, <laughs> but <laughs> we, you know, we have a, um, we have processors. We're one of the, if not the only one of, I think two, but I think we might be the only um, community in Alaska where we are a 12 month a year processing um, community. We, we have um, long line potfish, trawlers, we have um, saners, set netters, gill netters. We have the whole gamut that fish out of Kodiak. So we're really fortunate. It's been a real um, economic stabilizer for Kodiak. And I think a lot of the reason, and we've got several um, uh, processors that are in Kodiak too. And I think a lot of the reason that they're able to um, continue processing 12 months a year is our the fact that we're our energy costs are so reasonable being that we're 99.9 percent .9 renewable energy at kodiak which is an incredible feat and it's it's we've been able to keep our our um, electric kilowatt rates low i don't think there's been a raise on them since i think in two 2011, but I might be wrong on that. So that's really been an advantage for us. And that's that's really uh, all about hydro and wind power and renewable energy to take you off diesel. One of the things about Kodiak that has struck me is how the uh, the 12 year operation has led to a, a resident workforce. You're not a seasonal workforce like other communities. So you have people, you have whole families, I guess, who uh, for generations have worked in seafood who live in Kodiak. And that's different than some other communities. Right. And we're very fortunate and very grateful for that. And just like anything else, these people are a part of our community. We depend on them just as much as they depend on the fisheries for their livelihood. It's, it's really a win-win a deal. And then, of course, we have our rocket launch there, too, which is which is really exciting and it's um it's really taking monumental steps forward you know uh, it hasn't been funded by the state for six or eight years now and they're they're finally getting a lot of pro um, private contracts because of all the um communication satellites that they're launching. That's really, really made a big difference in our community. And it's that also is really stimulating to our economy when a launch goes off. As, aside from the fact that it's pretty exciting. <laughs> I've always <laughs> wanted to go down there and watch that. I've often, um, I've followed uh, the, the, you know, the Kodiak Launch Complex and Alaska Aerospace, you know, since its inception. And I, I think it's just amazing that we can have something like that here in Alaska. And most Alaskans don't even know about that. It, you know, it's really incredible. I've had the good uh, fortune two or three times now to take five or six legislators down to Kodiak and everyone, we've always gone out and had a, a tour. We tour all the processing facilities and we also go out and tour the rocket launch. And it's just, it is amazing to see that operation and, out there it it is first class i would say it it's equivalent to almost any other one in the u.s and we're one of only two places in the u.s that can launch polar rockets 
So, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty exciting. And rockets and satellites and polar orbits have an advantage because they can reach all parts of the world because the world in a polar orbit, the world essentially turns underneath them. And uh, that's a real advantage for us. Right. And, um, you know, as long as I'm selling Kodiak, we also, it's pretty, uh, we also have the largest Coast Guard base in existence in Kodiak. It's, um, and boy, I'll tell you, they sure are an integral part of our community as well. We're really, we're really fortunate. We have a, a great community and I know there's a lot of them in um, Alaska like that, but being on an island the way we are, it seems like we have a lot more um, interaction with each other simply because we need each other a little bit more when you're stuck out there on an island and the ships don't get in or the planes don't get in. You just get on hotline and say, I'm, I'm out of this. Can somebody help me out? And, and somebody always does. It's pretty nice. Well, speaking of being on an island, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention how that the Alaska Ferry Marine Highway System is very important to Kodiak. And there's been a, a pretty uh, eventful past couple of years. Do you, do you see hope on the horizon? Oh, I'm really excited about it. I am very excited about it. And I've had several conversations with the new commissioner, um, Commissioner Anderson, and he's excited about it too. I were in the process of moving forward on the new Testamina and in a conversation I had with the commissioner, he actually said, we need to rebuild our fleet. And that was very encouraging to hear him recognize the fact Alaskans want their marine highway system. Well, it's a hard thing for people from many other states to understand how, how uh, it is our, this is our national highway system um, that connects our, you know, our coastal communities. Um, I've always been interested too, that the, the, it, it was formed very early right after statehood and it was funded by a bond issue, a general obligation bond issue that was voted on by all Alaskans from all different parts of the state. And that's, that was pretty amazing that Alaskans were able to come together to form and, and to finance the first ferry vessels for the, uh, for the marine highway system. Well, I'll tell you something, that wasn't the first time Alaskans came together over the Alaska Marine Highway System. Um, a couple of years ago, when there wasn't much interest um, from the administration in so far as the Marine Highway System was concerned, Alaskans spoke and they spoke loudly. And when they called in to our transportation meeting, they broke every record there was in uh, testimony since they had been keeping track of it in this building, in the Capitol. Alaskans want their marine highway system. Well, it, that's evidently having some impact. So at any rate, thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker Stutes, for joining us. And, and um, I've visited Kodiak before, and I look forward to going there again. And I, I, I love visiting. It's a very beautiful place. Well, come on down. We'd love to have you. We'll make sure you get a tour of the rocket launch. And thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I would love to view that, see that rocket launch. I'd like to see one of those things go up. <laughs> yep, it's exciting. Thank you very much. This thank you. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity.